Hi everybody, my name is Mabola MC. I'm a lecturer of ICT at Charles Wanga College of Education. I'm shooting this video on computer algorithms and these computer algorithms are in mathematics. I'm motivated to shoot um, this uh, video because um, most of the people have a little bit of some problems working out the algorithms working out the flow charts, working out the pseudocodes. So basically, that is what I'm trying to look at. This video will cover the following. Um, I will define what an algorithm is from definition. Then we'll look at how to represent uh, algorithms and then we'll look at the symbols that are used when you are structuring a flowchart. Then um, we'll look at special operators that, um, that are used when you are working out an algorithm. And finally, we'll be looking at uh, the structures uh, of algorithm. So before we get started, let's look at the following scenario. My brother has a dog and his dog sleeps outside. So he's always worried about his dog, that his dog might get sick because there's bad weather outside. It's raining, it's cold. So he's always worried. So now, then uh, we sat down and I said, okay, fine, my brother, what can we do about this dog? Hey, I also sympathize with the dog because your dog looks cute. So what should we do? So then um, we, we thought, okay, fine. Uh, for now, let's build some walls around uh, a place where the dog can be sleeping. So we built a dog. We built a wall like this. Wow. <laughs> we were both happy. <clears throat> he was happy the dog is safe. I'm also happy that his his dog is uh, now safe. What did we just do? We walked through a problem and found a solution to a problem. We built walls around a place, and now the dog is safe. What we just did is an algorithm. So um, anything you do, whenever you have a problem, anything you do, all the processes you do during solving a problem, those steps you do are what we refer to as algorithm. Example, okay, you are thirsty. And then you stand up, you pick up a cup, and you draw some water, and then you drink. All those steps that you have done are what we refer to as the algorithm. You are hungry, and then uh, you pick up the pot, and you put some water on the stove or on a brazier, and then uh, all the minimum you put in and all that, until you have shame, and you eat all that which you have done to get to a solution is called an algorithm. So just to put in a statement what I just said, an algorithm is a sequence of steps to solve a given problem or execute a given task. So it's, it's just that simple. Now let's look at how to represent an algorithm. So an algorithm can be represented using flowcharts where it's more pictorial, there's a little writing, but there's more of some, some uh, symbols that are just, you know, structuring a, a problem. Then um, where you want to write, you, do want, you want to do more writing, then uh, you take the path of pseudocoding. So now, um, what is flowchart? Flowchart is simply just a method of representing the flow of data graphically. While pseudocode 
is where the same uh, problem, the same algorithm, you are going to represent it in some English statements and um, it, to make it look like pseudocodes, uh, you are going to also involve some mathematical notations like uh, plus, minus, greater than, all those symbols, those are the mathematical notations. Then there are certain special keywords that I use when you are developing a pseudocode. We'll be looking at them later on. Every time you are working out a flowchart or rather an algorithm, always remember the information processing cycle. The information processing cycle starts with the input, then followed by process, followed by output. This, you should never miss it. You must stick to it. I talked about the symbols that I use when you are working out a flowchart. Here are the symbols. This one is a rounded rectangle. This one is a parallelogram. This one is a rectangle. This one is a diamond. Then what are these symbols used for? This one is used at the beginning of an algorithm. So you use it at the beginning and also at the end of an algorithm. I'll show you very soon an example. And then um, this one is used uh, to get input. Remember, the information cycle is input, process, and output. So you input using this. Then you process using this one. You output using this one. So this one, therefore, is used for two purposes, for inputting and also outputting data. This one is used for processing the data. Then this one is a decision box. Uh, this one, you know, you make a decision in the processing of data, which might need a yes answer or a no answer. So it might need a yes answer or a no answer. We'll see as we go on. So let's look at this example. We are adding two numbers, 3 plus 2. Then how do we work out this using these very symbols? Okay. Uh, of course, that will give us an answer five then now when it comes to using this uh like i said there should be a starting point so this symbol here that is a symbol there you are starting you're indicating this is the beginning of this uh, algorithm then from that beginning what next you need to input some data you are inputting a, a three and a two so there it goes you input a three and a two then that 3 and 2 must be worked on. So you're bringing in this symbol. So that is uh, the processing side of it. After it has been processed, it must be displayed using this uh, symbol. So there it goes. So the output is there. Then to indicate that now I am done, we again revisit this symbol, which is used for stopping. So there it goes. So basically, this is how it works out. Now, let's look at the operators that are used when you are working out an algorithm. In this video, I'll look at three types of operators. The first one is arithmetic operators. So the table of the arithmetic operators is this one. These, uh, we know them very well. Uh, maybe the difference will come in with the, the division symbol, mostly in uh, algorithm, we use this one. And then for multiplication, we use this one. Then for powering up a number, we use this one. Next set of operators are those used for comparison. Uh, so the table is uh, as follows. So this is uh, for grade for equal to, and the uh, this one is not equal to. Slightly different from how we use them or write them, write them in mathematics. So you just have to know them anyway. Then we have the assignment operator. The assignment operator is this one. To help me explain it, let me use an example. Okay, fine. Um, 
these are common things that um, we see in mathematics and algebra where a question says given that a is equal to 5 and b is equal to 3 then you have to find the value of c using this equation so how do we go about this one we know that we cannot add a variable so what do we do we check for what is assigned to a we check for what is assigned to b so what is assigned to a is 5 what is assigned to b is 3 now so what is therefore an assignment operator an assignment operator is that which um, assigns a value this 3 it assigns it to B this 5 is assigns it to A now why am I using equal sign here because mostly here in Zambia or some other country most of other country they also use an equal sign so it's either you use this symbol or use the equal sign so this therefore num assign i mean one assign to num is just the same as if five assign it to a so i can even equally write this one as num equal to one so basically in the algorithm in in certain situations you might find this symbol instead of the equal symbol so if you find this symbol don't uh, worry uh, it just simply means equals so how is this one read it's read as um, assign one to num or it can also be read as set num to one that like you are saying make num to be one Okay, now let's look at the keywords that are used for inputting data and outputting data. So the keywords that are used for inputting data are these. The keywords that are used for outputting data are these. So you can use the word input, you can use the word read, you can use the word enter. For outputting, you can use the word output, you can use the word write, you can use the word print. Um, I've seen some programs. Um, mostly people or programmers they match these words this word would be matched with this one that one matched with this one this one matched with this one um, basically those are some of the programs that i've seen and now we're going to look at the structures that are there in algorithm um a problem can be structured in several ways there are certain problems that are quite linear. They're just straight, straight, straight. Um, they, they don't have much complication, so I'll not concentrate much on them. But uh, there are other structures or algorithms, rather, that um, it, it, it pose a certain challenges. So it's either you are going to pick, you are going to look at uh, that particular or structure uh, that particular problem to answer to issues of selection maybe you have a lot of choices and from the choices then you need to pick up one choice so if you are going to have a, an algorithm that answers to that then you are going to use the selection statements then there are also situations when um, a problem poses some uh, you know challenges or rather it, it, it is at some point where there's some repetition of some task, um, iteration of some task. So if um, you have a, a situation of that nature, then you will need to use the repetition statements. Let's start off by looking at uh, the algorithms that have to do with selection. So basically, if you are going to handle selections, then um, you may wish to use one of these two it can be the if statement or it can be the case statement so 
Um, I'll start by looking at the if statement. We're going to start off by looking at the if statement. The example that I'm going to use in this algorithm is an algorithm that checks whether you can drive. Okay, so let's get, let's get started. Now, um, I have uh, deliberately put um, these keywords, the if, if, then, else, and if in red so that we, we track them. So now we see here, the question is, I mean, if you have driving license, then, then what should you do? You should do some task. I want to emphasize that the statement that comes between this if and then, this statement, is a statement that is being examined, is a statement that is being checked. So this will need an answer. It's either it's going to be a yes answer or a no answer. If it's a yes answer, then there should be some action that, take, uh, that should take place. If it's a no answer, still also there should be other actions that uh, should take place. So in this situation, I'm saying, if you have driving license, then, then what? Drive. So this is the action there. Now, like I said, it's either it's going to be a no answer or a yes answer. In this situation, this person, it's a yes answer. If it's a yes answer, then the person is going to drive. What about if it were a no answer? What will happen? Else, so this is where the else comes in. Else, don't drive. And then after that, that loop, I mean, there is this structure must come to an end by indicating the if end statement. Now, this same algorithm can also be written in um, a flowchart. So, uh, basically, I'll just introduce uh, some few basic, th basic things about uh, uh, flowcharts. You recall that um, this is a decision box. In the decision box, you must put a question. And this question requires two answers. I mean, it's either somebody will say yes or you say no. So, since this one is a question, it must always end with a question mark. So, now, do you have a driving license? If the answer is yes, then what? Drive. So, this symbol here, you may recall that I said it's used for outputting. Drive. Uh, I've structured this problem to just be very simple um, so that we begin to connect later on. We'll put in some more things that are supposed to be inside this. Now, this is the yes, which is here. Then this is a no. If the answer is no, then how does it come out here? No, don't drive. So basically, this is how a problem is structured using the if then and else um, statement. We are going to look at the case statement. This case statement also falls under selection. Let me use this example for buying airtime. When you are buying airtime from Zam Zanako, you are presented with this menu, and this menu um you choose from this menu the network you're trying to buy talk time from and you put your choice here so remember that um, we are talking about selection and the case is one of those statements that you can use when you are structuring an algorithm that involves some selection so how does it work look at this this is an input just that input is the same here. We don't know. X is a variable. A variable that is waiting that we assign a, a digit or a value to it. So now, the similar even here. This space is a variable that is waiting for us to assign a value. So then uh, let's see what happens. So case if in this situation you're saying in case you choose one that's how it will sound like so case one of 
uh, that uh, menu then uh, in case you choose one then one you are trying to choose an mtn menu and i'm mtn talk time a case of two then you are choosing airtel case of three you are choosing zam zamnet zamtel now tell me if i kid in here five six or any other number what will happen okay fine this is what will happen otherwise this is where the otherwise is coming in otherwise what do you do invalid and then this this statement must come to an end now let's look at this statement um when we involve some flowchart well this input is the same input there and then um uh you this this um decision box is uh, requesting some input or rather is trying to examine some input that you have given is that input one if the answer is yes then uh, okay i'll give you the mtn menu menu where you're going to choose whether you're buying five quacha or ten quacha and so forth if your answer is uh, no it's not one but two then i'll give you that menu okay if it's not so then uh, i'll give you this menu okay if we, you have not given me one two three then what happens um what happens rather uh, it will, it should it should tell me that that's an invalid uh, input so basically this is how the flowchart will look like okay now let's look at an, uh, the algorithms that uh, look at uh, repetition so under this um we can use the while loop or we can use the repeat loop or we can use the do i mean the for loop so these are the three that uh, we'll talk about in this uh, lesson let's start off by looking at the while loop now this while loop um we'll look at an algorithm that adds numbers one up to four um remember that a while loop falls under repetition which means we'll keep on repeating a task it adds one plus two and then after getting the answer then it picks the next number adds and find the answer and then picks the next number so you see it is keeping on like it does some operation and then pick the next number does some operation picks the next number so there's that aspect of repetition so now let's get started look at this uh, to help us explain this um, uh, let's first of all declare a variable and this variable is going to be a sum where we'll do all the summations it's like a container where we'll be putting one plus one when we find one plus one we keep there and wait uh, for the system to request for the next number which means now it will like looping eh? uh, it requests for the next number and then you, when it finds that next number then uh, when it finds the sum for that the number that is currently the number that has already been added and the next number then it keeps into this sum and so forth and so forth so um the algorithm will look like this please take note here i have tried to make it just extremely very simple um later on i think my last example will look at um, how to write it properly for now i just want to concentrate on uh, making sure that we understand the wow loop so um from uh, i mean the first statement will be like uh, give me a number input input a number the, of course the first number to be input is one so we give one after putting in one then the the structure will try to interrogate is this one you have given me less or equal to four if indeed it is true this number is less or equal to four then can you do something to that number what are you going to do this number the first number is one which is here sum 
sum, what is assigned to sum is zero. So this is a zero here. So which means this first line, when we execute it here, it will give us one. So now sum has changed. It was zero. But now sum has become one here. Why? Because we have added these two. It is now one. Then after it has finished this task, what next? It should now um, begin to loop back and get the next number. Say so input the next number. The next number to be input will be these two here. Remember that I said sum which is here after adding this plus this, the sum is this one. This sum here is no longer zero, but it is one. So then it picks the next number, which is two. So after picking the next number, and then it interrogates and says, is that number you've given me less or equal to four? Then if indeed it is true, then this will be added. And then this becomes three. So now, remember now, our sum is three. This sum here uh, becomes three. Then the next number to be added to this, uh, it's going to be three. So then it interrogates. Uh, is that number you have given me, is it less or equal to uh, four? Then if indeed it is true, that it is less or equal to then do this so which means it comes here and say okay fine this plus the next number when you add sum here becomes six so our sum here has become six now check that it is keeping on repeating the same task repeating the same task repeating the same task until it becomes a force so it will keep repeating the task as long as it is true, now let's check what happens. So now, after it has a key in this, then uh, what would be the answer? The answer, of course, would be 10. But then uh, the next number, the next number that should have followed here is, is that number less or equal to 5? No ways. So if it's no ways, then end while loop. And then when you end that while loop, give me the sum. That's all. So basically, that is how this structure works when it comes to the wow loop. Okay, at this time, let's look at the repeat statement. I'll use the same example. Uh, so, of course, we start with a sum. Then I'll concentrate on just how it is written because I've already explained the, the whole repeating, repeating issue. So, uh, the repeat will be written like, of course, the input will still be there. Then here on the repeat, it will be like, um, well, uh, here we have zero. The first number that you are to give me is one. Then this one plus this sum, then it gives to this, assigns it to this, and then it will ask, uh, is that one less or equal to four? So if it is less or equal to, indeed it's uh, yes, it's less than four. Then uh, you keep repeating. That's why I say repeat this until, until this condition becomes a force. As long as become, it, is, it remains true, keep repeating, keep repeating, keep repeating. So that same process will come in, the one which I explained in the previous slide. And then finally, the answer is there, and this is the answer over here. Now let's look at the for loop. I'll use the same example. So the for loop will look like this. Of course, we will start with this uh, sum has been an empty a variable and then um, the difference that you will notice now is that uh, the for loop does not request for input previously here there was a statement for input but now there is no input because in the for loop you declare your first variable here and the last variable is here so you are saying 
uh, the numbers that I want you to keep repeating are starting from 1 up to 4. So for 1 to 4, these numbers, keep repeating them. You add the first one, you add the first one, and then uh, you add the second one, add the third one, you add the fourth one. And then uh, finally, after doing all the repeating and repeating and repeating, that's why there's this word next. After you've done the first one, next, next number. Uh, in number two, uh, after you have done added uh, that number, then you add the next one, which is uh, three, and so forth. So that is how it goes about. So finally, uh, the answer is found in ten. Okay, now let's consider four examples. Uh, the first example will be an algorithm that converts minutes to seconds. So, our problem we have is um, converting minutes to seconds. So, this problem must go into processing. And then after we have processed, then we should find a solution. So, basically, this is the structure of our problem. Um, this problem we can either take the path of structuring it using um, pseudocodes or structuring it using flowcharts. Let me start with pseudocode. Okay, fine. Um, every code must, must have a beginning. So start, and then after that, then we input the number of minutes. Example, if it is three minutes, we give the system three minutes. And then after that, the system must get that three minutes and then multiply it. So at this level, it's processing. Remember that um, the information processing cycle must start with input and uh, process, then output. So after this has been calculated, then the answer here, if it is three minutes, that one eight is assigned to seconds. And then the computer or the calculator must display output the answer. That answer will be 180 here. So then uh, this algorithm must end here. Now, let's consider the same in uh, flowcharts. So in flowchart, the start, the start must be there. And you see the symbol. And then from there, we come to the inputting where you are giving the minutes. And then you come to the processing side. After your process, then you must display the answer. And after displaying the answer, then you stop the algorithm. So this is uh, a linear kind of a flowchart or a linear yeah, solution, basically. In this example, <clears throat> I'll be looking at um, a structure or an algorithm that involves some selection. So to help me do that, I've structured a problem that will um, look at the eligibility to voting. Okay, fine. Um, I'll consider this uh, by first looking at an, uh, uh, a pseudocodes. So I have the start, and then from there, uh, I'll ask an input of the age. And then um, we come into examining the age. So we have the if, and then we, we are examining this part. If the answer is yes, then what happens? The output should be, you can vote. If the answer is no, the output should be, you cannot vote. Then we end. So what I've written here is an algorithm um, to this question. So now, this same algorithm, I'll write it in uh, uh, using flowchart. So in flowchart, there is um, start, and then I put in some edge. Like I said, I'm trying to bring in aspects of selection. So now, this 
is uh, this question where we are saying if age is greater or equal to 18 then then what there should be two responses either it's a yes answer which displays this one or a no answer which displays this one in the same manner uh, wherever you find in your algorithm there is a part that looks at um, some selection particularly where the answer is going to be yes or no just when you find something like that then when it comes to a flowchart then um, you are going to have a decision because somebody must decide he must decide to take a yes must decide to take a no <laughs> or the answer must be yes or it must be no. so in this situation we're asking this is age greater or equal to 18 question mark take note there's a question mark here so in this decision box there should be a question mark then this is is optional you may leave it you can just write age greater than or equal to 18 that's your fine so now if the answer is yes then uh, we display uh, an answer or we we give a response that well you can vote uh and then the algorithm will stop but remember that this must have either a yes or no answer so what happens if the answer is no then when the answer is no then it should display okay no you cannot vote and then since um a, there's that response every algorithm must come to an end so it will also have to come in and it, then come out here and then close so basically this is how how we can work about a situation where we're using a selection <coughs> I'll consider another situation that uses selection statement. <clears throat> so um, I'll start by looking at it from an algorithm. The solution we are trying to get to is um, to determine the greatest number. The greatest number. Now, um, I'll decide to input three numbers. This can be like uh, four, then this is two, this is seven, example. So now I'm trying to determine, I'm trying to ask the system to determine which number is greatest. So then we continue. So we are saying if A is greater than B and A is greater than C, then, then what? Now, kindly note here that um, uh, I did not write like if A is greater than B and C you cannot write like that each each uh, aspect of this A must be examined or compared separately so you are comparing this and this you are comparing between these two and then you compare between this and this so never write like if a is greater than b and c no it should be if a is greater than b and a greater than c then then what okay then if it truly a is greater than the two then um give a statement that a c is bigger then um, if else now I do not use the word else because there are several conditions. So where there are only two conditions, yes, and then no, it ends there. Then you will not write the if else this statement. You will not bring this this in the statement. But if there are few other conditions, then you should involve else if. This time we are looking at we are comparing B. Compare B with a and compare b with c then if indeed it is true it's a yes answer then display b now <clears throat> if that fails then if else a compare c with a <clears throat> then compare c with b <clears throat> if that is true then output c and then you end the if else and then you close the algorithm.
<coughs> now let's look at this same algorithm uh, using flowcharts. So the flowchart, it will start there and then um, uh, <coughs> we have an input of the three numbers. The three numbers are going to be examined. So the first situation is where we are trying to compare A with these other two. And then if A indeed is true, then we are going to display A and then the algorithm is going to end. But if A is not <coughs> the greatest, <coughs> then it will come to this. Um, then uh, we'll compare B with the other two numbers. If indeed A is greater, then uh, A to sh B is going to be displayed and then the algorithm is going to end. If that fails, then it's going to compare C with other numbers and then um, it's going to display the C. If it fails, then it must still go back just in case probably um, it was trying to check up to here, see whether C is the greatest or things, then it fails, then it must go back again, start the whole process again. But um, there are other ways that this uh, algorithm can be written. Um, uh, so uh, don't be surprised if you find somebody writing it slightly different from this. So basically, this is how uh, this algorithm will work out. Okay, in this one, we're going to, in this example, we're going to bring back the same problem we had of summing the first four numbers. So, let's get started. <coughs> uh, now, in the first place, when I explained this algorithm, I concentrated on the sum. But this situation, in this situation, I want to explain how the numbers are going to be increasing from 1, the next number to be added is 2, the next number to be added is 3, the next number to be added is 4. How does that happen? So I'll not concentrate much on the sum, but I'll concentrate much on how the number uh, keeps on incrementing. Okay, fine. So look at this. <clears throat> Currently, the number uh, the numbers we are adding is one up to four. So we declare a variable. So this variable we have assigned it one, and then we come here and we, here we have one. So while the number is less than one, do something. What are you going to do? sum it so it will be check here the sum currently is zero so here we have zero <clears throat> so one plus zero the answer becomes one so here we have the value of one <clears throat> then now how do we get to the next number to be added because the first number we've added currently is one so if we don't issue instruction that um, it should get the next number number two the next number number three up to number four and then when it gets to number five then the five should be rejected if you don't write a statement like this it means that it will keep on coming back here and then get one then throughout it will just be uh, working with one one and one and one so it will be like a loop that is infinite it does not end but this loop must come to an end at some point but how do you make it uh, come up, come to an end or rather how do you make sure that the numbers that are being added are incrementing so check this statement is the one we use <clears throat> so our number one right now is one i mean the variable here it's one so which means here we have one so then you pick this one and then add it there this becomes two then that two will be assigned to this one this two will go up there and be examined is this two less than four less or equal to four if it is indeed true then you do something here you are going to have two, 
which will be added to the current value of sum and then you assign sum there remember here number is two so we bring two down here then this one plus two it becomes three so which means the next number to be worked with is in uh, number three so that three is picked up and goes there and this three is examined and then uh, it's found to be true then if it's found is to be true it's true then um, do something what are you going to do that three add to sum and then the sum is found there now how do we increase to number four bring that three here and then that three is going to be we're going to add a one and then that is added to this so now we have a four that four is going to be examined and this four yes the statement is still true and then you do something and then four here and then it, then you bring four so now after four then um you add a one to this so that becomes five and then five there five is going to go up there and then uh, it's going to be examined is uh, five less or equal to four wow no see if it's not it's not so then and wow you end the wow here then after you have ended the wow then display the sum currently if you add one plus two plus three plus four the answer is going to be 10 so it will display the content which is in here it's going to be displayed there and uh, then the algorithm is going to stop now let's look at it uh, the same algorithm we look at it as a flowchart or a constructor for flowchart for it so start then um, this same statement comes in here and then um, the, the first number the number there is going to be examined to check whether that number qualifies there if the answer indeed is true then um, uh, this will be executed so and then and then after executing that one this number the number which is here is going to be incremented by adding a one which means that one which is coming up here which is uh, 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 here and then here with this one we add a one then after adding a one this one is passed on to this which means the current value of number is no longer one it has increased to two since it has increased to two then it goes up there to be fed into the system so this becomes two and then the whole process goes on and it will keep on going on increasing 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 until the statement becomes a force when it becomes a force then that five cannot be fed down here so since it cannot be fed out there then the algorithm must come to display the the output just like the way we have done here so when this algorithm goes through uh, repeat itself repeat itself until it is done like here it repeats itself repeat itself when it is done it goes out which means this is the end wall so this is like end wall and then when you end the wall what happens there there's an output sum, output the sum which is the same way here output the sum after putting the sum what happens here you stop the algorithm so this is basically how you work out the uh, these algorithms this is the end of my tutorial thank you for watching